to you can't have a diva project without divas so here i have one of my last in the side a group it's a diptych it's one of my larger actually it's my largest african diva painting it's 60 by 60 when we're to, they are together we have jesse norman and we have Kathleen Battle. They were both on the same um, Spirituals album, which is a really beautiful thing. And it actually does have a red background. Sometimes my two-dimensional model, if it is an album, uh, an LP, or a commercial image, I try to be somehow true or in some way true with the background that the images are in. It helps them to be recognized. Sometimes not so great, the, cho the color choice, or no color choice, so I do it myself. Billy Porter is an uber African diva. This is a person who knows how to entertain, perform, costume, there was no way that I could see an image like this and not turn them into an African diva. They are in a very important Evo mask for the maiden spirit where men dance to honor the importance of women in the life of the Evo villages. And our Billy Porter wears this mask well because he has done that androgynous thing of being a little female, a little male, and a lot of wonderful. Tres. Betty Davis, Dynamo. You think Madonna was the first person to dance across the stage in lingerie and do some crazy stuff? 1970s. Afrofuturism at its best. Betty Davis, one time wife of Miles Davis, that doesn't matter. This is a woman who was a game changer in her own time. One of my early African divas. She's wearing a quelle mask. She is empowered, she is powerful, and she has on some amazing jewelry. You own. The African Diva Project is not static. There's a lot of things going on in my head when I try to think about who's next, what's the next thing, how am I going to make things more vibrant, more interesting, more compelling, more provocative. This is an image I found in the New York Times magazine of Solange. And I looked at it and I kept saying, why does this look so strange but yet so familiar? And it's because they posed her looking like the 1950s Barbie doll. Um, the objectification of the female body continues in order to sell product. If it's a fashion outfit or if it's um, uh, an album of music. I like Solange's music. I like her look. I like her ideas. And I gave her a full head of blowing hair sitting behind a miniature Dan mask. She is fabulous. And who knows what's going to be the next African diva. This is Cassandra Wilson's African diva. She wears a Mosi mask, which comes out to celebrate the um, return of young boys after they had been initiated into manhood, the return into the village. It's a great celebration. It's a very provocative figure. I see it as um, having a great sensuality. Uh, it has a wonderful background. This is the actual image from this album. She's, she is uh, dipping into waters that are just about the color that I have on the background here. But this is also one of three of the later side A uh, African divas, which extend beyond the edge of the canvas. Uh, it's, it, it's a way that I am pushing this image into our real world and it moves and it dances outside of the frame. Two. 
It's rare that I have two identically sized images from the African Diva Project. This is uh, Didi Bridgewater is, and the painting, the oil on canvas is in the Calabar Gallery. This is a version on paper, a hand colored print that I had put together because I had changed my mind about what mask I wanted Didi to wear. So the oil on canvas has a beautiful Yoruba gilded body mask. And this one was the first mask I had tried out. This is actually the painted mask that is on this paper version of Dee Dee Bridgewater's piece. It is a ballet and blow mask. Uh, it is a portrait mask. And I found that this work was just as beautiful as the oil. And so it remains a part of the Diva Project. Diana King, reggae extraordinaire, amazing woman. Where's Diana King? Haven't heard much from her, love her music, love her style. She is a rare African diva in scale, 50 inches square from side A, but she's also a painting that is done in grayscale. One of the very few paintings where I chose to do grayscale, the album itself actually is black and white. She has a fabulous Jolie that's from Nigeria, mask on her head, which is extending off of the edge as well. As I said, this is one of the things I did to animate and also to maintain a certain scale of the body that I was after. So um, I want Diana to come back and sing more for us. All of her titles are in the back. You can't really see it because it's white, but come see it in real person, you'll know. Um. I live with my own work. I really enjoy the African divas that I dream up. This is Frida Payne, and I can remember finding this album in a secondhand shop and seeing that it folded out three times to give me this triple full length view of an amazing singer. And then I wanted to put an authentic mask on her. I wanted to put the real wood on her. And so I had this great passport mask, this Dan passport mask, which I attached to the outside of the acrylic that is protecting the uh, triple fold LP. And she's of course framed in gold. So she's one of my gold LPs. I live with her for now. Um, and I live with a lot of my work all around my home because the African Davis make me feel like it's wonderful to be who I am as a painter. So I pulled one of two shadow boxes when I was thinking about scale, doing work on paper. This is Ashanti Lauren. It's an image of Lauren Hill. She is wearing a brass can mask, which is done with the lost wax process. And it is inside of a deep frame shadow box. And this is when I started doing the lyrics on the bottom. I have two um, of this scale that I did a couple of years ago. Love working on paper with very tiny brushes. This is oil on paper that is actually prepared to be worked on with oil paint. I think I might have some gel marker in there as well. Also, one of the few that I actually put her dreadlocks in because Lauren's dreadlocks are a part of her identity.